Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get us started. Yeah, we're a little bit early, but that means, of course, we can, if we need to or want to, can end a little early. I'm sure I'll have got one or two folks, uh, one in here, and I'm sure I'll have some other, uh, those of you who join me, so you'll want to uh, scroll back and take a look at the beginning. Just some housekeeping uh, that's ahead of us. I wanna talk about what's due this week. You have two quizzes that are to do that are due, excuse me, from the big text, the few uh, chapter seven, eight, a quiz over it. And then there's a quiz over chapter nine and 10 out of the Stephen Few textbook. Now, one of the things I have here for you and you'll see is this file, Access Case One, and I've got instructions to upload this for Access Case One assignment, okay? So when you get ready to do access case one, that's, that's the, this file is the one you should upload for that assignment. Now next week, of course, is spring break, okay? And then uh, when we come back, uh, we'll be doing some more work in terms of uh, databases, because that's the section, that's the part of the course that we're in now, and we'll start to work on access case two and uh, maybe even three. And I have some resources here for you, business intelligence, the ROI on the return on investment on analytics, and easy Excel using regression, okay? And then uh, as we work on cases like access case number two, three, we have six access cases. I'll either have something there for you to upload or I will show you, uh, you know, what to upload. And, will flow on down on into uh, into April, as you can see. And then we start to come into the end of April and into early May, and of course we will, are moving rapidly towards the, the, the final, towards finals. So this is week number six and today, which is the 12th, and um, then on Thursday, which is the 14th. And again, we'll, we're gonna be talking about access. now. You ought to have your textbook with you when we cover these cases, and I would suggest that you do some uh, reading that will get you up to stuff, and that's chapter four, the introduction to database software. The key piece of it is over there on page 136, where it talks about the four, uh, the, the, the key components or objects in a database. So I want to, uh, want to, to show you that, and before we do that, I want to go back into the files section. And I want to talk about again, uh, why we use a database and why a database is important. And guess we're, we're back to this issue of the analytical cube, okay? And the analytical cube is important because it allows us, and I'll, I'm gonna scoot this up, make it a little bit larger. It allows us to see, remember we talked about this last week when we were dealing with pivot tables, and pivot tables are a good introduction to databases because they allow, a database allows us to store information or types of information and combine them into rows, okay, which we can then query and get information from them. And you see all of these questions would be what we call a query. And so we're able to go get data we store data in a table and because we can do queries, we can, we can uh, go through different sets of records and pull data from those and get some better insights about what we're after. Uh, databases are, are just about everywhere. Uh, if you log into Google and you do a search, you're, you're dealing with a database. If you go to ESPN, you're dealing with a database. Everything is arranged around that because that, that provides a way to retrieve, to store and retrieve data. Now again, over there on page 136, we talked about uh, the objects in, inside of a database. And I'm gonna go here to, this is uh, one called Access Case One, okay? And this is back from last fall. And I'm gonna download it and I will show you, okay? What do we mean by access objects? In access, there are, there, there are following types of objects. First of all are tables. That's where we store data, okay? And then the second, part, the second component, uh, we're dealing with queries, okay? 
And just like they show us over there in page 136 of the Solve It textbook, that's at figure 4-2 of page 136, they show us that we have a table, okay, that feeds into and is, and, and is created by, uh, it feeds into and creates forms, and feeds in and creates reports, and then we have queries that draw from tables, okay? And then we can use a query to generate a, a report. Now they also mentioned mount modules and macros, okay? And we're not gonna get into them. We're gonna basically deal with tables, queries, forms, and reports. And in this, in this object, uh, pardon me, in this, uh, in this access database, okay, we have those elements. We have the tables, we have queries, we have reports. What we don't have is a form. Now, a form is a particular type of object, and I'll just walk through them. A table is designed to store data. That's all it's meant to do. And then a query is a way that I go in and get data from a, 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 from a, a, a table or a, or a group of tables. Reports are things that we generate from a query, okay? And then I also mentioned a form, okay? A form is a way for us to input data more easily. And we'll get into a little bit of that as we go through the course. But for example, when you go over, and let's see, I'm gonna do this here for just a sec. I'm gonna go out and go to Amazon, and I'll show you what we're talking about, okay? Now, when I log into, when I come into Amazon, I'm looking at a form. You say, what do you mean? Well, what, what, the, the, what, the, what they want me to do is to select an item, okay? And then maybe drill down and look at some other stuff and eventually end up putting stuff in my cart and making a purchase. Now, right now, this is a lot like that one case we did where somebody just visited the website. Okay, and now Amazon also has what we call a recommendation engine, and that is a uh, it will it will give you a display, okay, coming in that it thinks of, of things that believes you may buy or that it's trying to sell for some promotional reason or maybe they're high uh, volume items or whatever, but it's a database, and now. If I do a, if I do a search here, and I'm going to put uh, uh, I'll put um, let's see I'm going to put books, all right, and I'll put something like uh, I don't know database, okay. They're going to give me some recommendations, okay, and they and and those recommendations are going to be based upon my preferences or if they believe I've stated some preferences to them. Uh, relevance, maybe price, they'll let me figure that out because if you look on the left side over here, okay, here are more ways that I can drill down into Amazon and find what I want to get. And once I've done that, we're good to go. Now notice, I, you said I call it a recommendation engine, and the reason if you take a look here, you're going to see where there are customer reviews in terms of stars. And, and you've been over to, to Amazon, you've probably seen these, and you may have even used recommendations in shopping, but you maybe not, had not thought about it, okay? Well, the point is, as you come down here, you get some reviews about the author, okay? Product details, how much it's sold, et cetera, if there are any related media to it, okay? And so, they're trying to give you an experience where you could maybe try it before you buy it. And one of the ways you do is you look inside. Hi. And here's the book, Seven Databases in Seven Weeks. Okay. And you can go in and look at the table of contents, the first page, the index, all of that there to kind of get a feeling of whether it would be something that you want or not. Okay. Now, we'll go back over here for a moment to this uh, access database that we were looking at, all right? And let's talk about the tables. 
tables are the heart of a database and we use tables to store things and just like a good uh, just like a good paragraph a table should address primarily one thing but a table is made up of records and records are com are, com are composed of or made up of characteristics variables dimensions whatever you might want to call it and we'll take we'll open this up and before let's do a little navigating first okay and my mouse probably just died on me there. Yeah, it does this on a consistent basis. So let's see if it's dead or it's just playing dead on me. Sometimes I can pop this thing out and get it to work well. Let's reboot it here for this mouse for a sec. There we go. Now, I'm gonna click on this table and let's just open it up. And then if you want, you can move the shutter back a little bit so you can see the table. You can, and navigating it is not that big of a deal, okay? I can make this a little bit, bit larger if I want, doesn't matter. But I'm looking at this table and it's called uh, um, one month, okay? Case seven. And what this, what this database, what, what it's telling me here, and we'll go in here, here's the month, here's the ID, okay? And we have then a hours worked. We have an hourly rate this, these folks earned. Then we have some things like gross pay, federal tax, state tax, FICA, and net pay. These are calculated, and for them we would have to generate for example, to get the gross pay for this, uh, this person with ID number three, we're gonna have to take the hours work times the hourly rate, get the gross pay, then take off the federal tax, and then compute the federal tax, the state tax, the FICA, and the net pay. You see, this, this really would be better off to be handled in a spreadsheet, and it would. So I would probably take something like this, and I'd, throw it over to Excel, okay, and, and get it all done, okay, and put it in, and have the calculations and then pop it back in here, okay? And, and so a tables, you know, sometimes tables are, are useful, sometimes they can be a, a problem. Now, uh, I could, if I want to go in, if I wanted to, I could go in and develop a query that would, that would fill in all this data but there's really no point. I'm using this spreadsheet for something it's not intended to do. So I would just simply take it and I would send it, I would export it back into Excel, okay? And then I would, then I would just simply put, do, the, do the computation and then import it back in here. Now, we can look at the second table, okay? And this is two months, we'll open this up, all right? And here is, here is another one and this is, this is, a, this is a series of tables for what they, how many hours they worked, one month, two months, and then the third month. And you'll see that same pattern here, okay? I think we might have messed with this a little bit to come up with some figures, but, or we might have, we might have uh, formatted these fields, all right? So again, I've got one of these situations where I, where I would probably want to do, if I do this much computational work, I'll probably throw it over into Excel and then come back. Let's do, drill down in one of these and see, and if you right click on, on, the, you know, on the top of the thing, or you can come up here in the far left, you'll, you'll see the design view. Let's do that, okay? Now the design view in the table is pretty simple, okay? We have a field. Okay, that field is some characteristic, some variable, something that's important that we're interested in. And then we have a certain type of data. Now in this, in this case, it's the month, okay? And the data type is a number. Then we have an ID, okay? And if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see a thing called the field properties, okay? And we'll ask, is this required or not? And if it, and is this indexed? 
the index just simply means do we do we want the database the underlying what they call the jet engine to to to, to do us to do searches as it according to what it thinks is the optimal way to do a search an example would be if I'm if I'm getting if I'm searching through for last names yeah their last names tend to cluster in a certain set of, of uh, letters. So the, the index would go there and start searching first on the basis that the more that stuff clusters around something, the more likely that's what it's after. But on this case, we could also make this what we call an auto number, and that is it's a sequence of numbers one, two, three, four, and that way, in order, in order for a record to be created, or be saved, okay, we advance to the next one and we have to have all the, and we have to, we have a new number each time. Now, as you look through here and you come, you look at the month, okay, the ID, the, 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 the last name of the person, the number of hours they work, the hourly rate, the gross pay, all that business. You keep, if you look down, you'll see the field properties and some questions are, is this required? Is it not required? Now, this is just me. When you have a database, and we'll go back up to the data sheet view if you want to do that, okay? It's pretty simple to do. You can go back up here, click on data sheet view. And why would you not require all of this if you're going to have a place to store it? And so one of the lessons of this is, if I'm gonna use a database and I'm gonna use a table, which is the foundation for it, okay? I don't wanna have anything that's not required. That's just my own personal thing. Otherwise, you have, otherwise, pardon me, you have an incomplete record. Well, I'm gonna close this off for just a second, okay? And let's come down here and let's look at this thing called BUSDRESS, that's business address. I will click on it. And here's the, the address of a set of clients, okay? And there's their zip code, okay? Their phone number, their name, the, the, address, the whole bit. This looks more like a real database table, okay? For the simple reason that first of all, there are more records than there are columns, and each of the columns are meshed or, or pulled together from variables or characteristics that are important. For example, this is about contacts, reaching these people, their, their last name, okay, uh, the company name, the, the address, which includes the street, the city, and the state. There's a zip code, and there's a phone number, okay? Now, if I wanted to, I could take these data, export them into Excel, okay, and then go out and put them into like a map to see where my customers are lo located. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna close this, all right, for a second, and I'm gonna right click on BizDress on that table, okay, and I'm gonna come to export. And I'm gonna export this to Excel. And I'm gonna make sure that it lands on my desktop, okay. It'll be as, a, as an Excel workshop, a workbook, and I'll click Save, and then I'll click OK. Now I'm going to diminish this down, okay, and go down to my desktop and take a peek and see what I've got. And I should have this dress over here somewhere. Da, 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 da. Did I put you Q? Here it is. You're going to notice something about this exported sheet. It doesn't show you the icon of Excel because it's it's really an exported object at this point. So I'm going to open it up. Okay, and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge it, and I'm going to save it to my desktop computer desktop. And I'm going to put it up on the desktop and I'm going to, and I'm going to call it BizDress. I'll click Save. 
He says, yeah, I want to replace it. Okay. Now, uh, let's go and go back to your browser and lift it up and let's open up a new tab. Okay. And go into the search and we're going to go to Easy Map Maker. Okay. Now we can create a map from Excel data. And one of the nice things about a database, if it's designed well, and if it is that I can take the data that are in it, pull them out and put them into some kind of context, whether it's I'm computing them, okay, and looking at statistical trends, for example, or I want to see them in a different context, for example, like a map. So I'm going to click here, create a map, from Excel, and I'm going to click create a map, all right, and I want to go down to my, I'm going to go into my uh, Excel, all right, and I'm going to highlight all, all of that, okay, make sure G is, yep, and I click control C, and I'll come back up here, all right, and I'm going to click here and paste it in and then make map. Let's see what I get. Now it's going to start to tell me you know, how, many, how many addresses it's got. Okay. There's some other things over here. One of the things that we've learned, one of the things that, that, uh, that's happening out there is that we've learned that we can take locational data and we can layer it different types of maps, or we can drill down, okay? I'm, I'm okay, okay, that's all right. Okay, and those are my, and that shows me all my addresses. Now, I had some of these that wouldn't accept for some reason, I don't know. But I can see now, okay, all of the, all of the addresses where, where my customers are at, and I think if they're gonna give me some other data, maybe down here, yeah that are not, it may want me to put it into a CS file, I don't know. But I can come back later and update this map with another, with another spreadsheet, okay? So I just wanted to show you that so you, can, so you can see how powerful a tool is, a database, and how it is essentially uh, the, the foundation for what we call business intelligence, okay, or analytics, that type of thing. Now, the, the, as I said before, the textbook was talk, talk, spoke about, and we'll just close that file off there. I don't need it. And it talked about the, the different types of objects, and we've looked at tables. And again, a table has the following properties. I'm just going to open it up and we'll go to the design view. It's going to have a field name and then a type of data that go into that field. And you can see on the drop, drop down what type of data it would be, your choice. And then field properties, okay? And the key part of them is whether it's required or not. Or if there's a, if there's a default value or a validation rule, all right? And this just, this just makes sure, we make sure by doing this that we create a table that has the data in the format that, that we want. For example, um, let's say we added a, we added a, uh, let's say we add a, um, a field on here called phone, okay? And we put that in short text, all right? Now, I'm gonna come down here into the field properties, and if you come down, you see a thing called field size, format, an input mask. Click on the input mask, and you'll see on the far right of that line a little blue dot with three, uh, a blue square with three dots. I'm going to click that. We'll save the table, and it's going to tell us if we want to format the phone data, how to do so. It will create a, 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 what we call an input mask, which makes the data be inputted a particular way. You run into that all the time. Now that's one of the ways that we make sure that the data are all uniform, okay? And, and you also you'll have, if you, you probably used to drop down menus where you could put in um, 
you know, whatever two, two letter state designation there is. The whole point is, if you get the table right, everything else works okay, All right? So I'm, I'm gonna try this, and here I wanna put my area code, so I'll move that over, and I'll put in 405, okay? And I'll put in 585, okay? And then 4416, and the data are saved, and they're in a format that I want, okay? They also have zip code, password, social security number, those kinds of things where people, okay, if you let them just put it in willy-nilly, you're gonna have a mess on your hands, okay? So, we'll, if I, if I want to, I can get rid of that, I can get rid of that, uh, that, that field, I would click right here, and I'll, de and I'll delete, the, uh, delete the rows, okay? So I'm done there. Done with those. Okay, now let's go back up to the data set VOC 172. Okay, and now if we want, if we want, again, talked about this, we could throw export this out, and do the computational work. Not going to do that today. I'm going to close this off for a second, and we're going to come to another table which is called customers, and let's open it up. Now it looks, okay, more like the type of table we'd see. And I can see already there are two input masks on this table, okay? Let's go down here, and let's go to the uh, design, design view, and click, right click it, and we'll go down there. And you're gonna see a thing called customer ID, and notice the little key beside it. That's what we call a primary key, all right? A primary key makes each record unique, okay? And in this case, it happens to be an auto number and it's a customer ID, all right? So each new customer gets their own new number. Then I have the company name, okay? And then I have a billing address, a city and a state, Okay, and notice on the state, I have a field size of two, because I want two, uh, and then on the zip code, you look here and you'll see there's an input mask. And then on the phone number, you're gonna see the same thing. So that we input the data in a way that makes sense. If I don't follow this, the record won't save. This keeps me from having a whole bunch of records that I don't need, okay? Now, I'm gonna close this off for just a second, all right? And I'm gonna go back and down, download this for a second. Now, we're gonna be working on this very first case, number one, okay? And we'll take a look at it here in just a minute. But before we do that, I want to go down and look at this thing called a query. Click on that. It says a query, Kansas City. Let's open it up. And you're going to see a query. And this is a, this is a query of uh, a firm's clients in Kansas City. A query is a question. So when we develop a query, we're actually going into a table or set of tables, okay? And we're pulling it. We're pulling data out so we can make information. And that is, who are my clients? How many do I have? Well, this is information. Now I'm going to click on the design view. Okay, and I'm going to move these over a little bit on the city. Okay, and we'll move this over a little bit on the last name if it will cooperate. And we got the first name. Let's talk about what's in here. First of all, above this is we have the table that we're gonna be working with. And this time, and this one's called Northampton case one, okay? And apparently they wanted to get a list of the people who are clients in Kansas City. So we chose the fields, the company, okay? 
uh, the first name of the contact person, their last name, and this can be drag or drop, or you can use uh, little menus, doesn't matter. And then we got the city, okay? And if you look right down here on the criterion, we use the criterion Kansas City, okay? Now, you'll notice something. These three boxes are checked. What that means is they will display, but I don't want to just display Kansas City over and over and over. That's ridiculous, and it looks nasty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this, although it will still give me the results. I'm going to hide that output in terms of the city, and I'll just name, I'm just going to name the query Kansas City Clients. Okay, so this tells me everybody who is from Kansas City that is a client. And I can go back up here and I can run this query, okay? And there it is. Now I want you to right click on that again and go down to a thing called the SQL view, okay? And I'll show you this is the code that we can generate, we can either write the code in, or we can use like the query tool, like we just saw, to do it. Now, there's nothing really hard about this. This is a select, uh, select query, and it just says select from Northampton, case one. So this is, this is the table, and here's the field that they want me to get from it. And then here's Northampton case one, that's a field, okay? And I, the, the table, and I want this field first name, okay? And then here's Northampton, I'm drawing it from that table, and I want the last name. And then I, and because the machine's stupid, I tell it, let's get it from the Northampton case one table. And then I add a condition. Remember, we, we, we worked in Excel with some conditional statements. In this case, I want where the Northampton case one dot city equals Kansas City, and the semicolon ends the whole thing. Now, we're not gonna be doing any of that. We're gonna be working up at the design level, okay? But I wanted to let you see it so you could understand we've got three ways to, to look at this query. But there's also one very important thing, okay? Now, while I think I had a record set there, and let me let me do this. So I grab it. I think we got a, a result set of maybe three or four. I'll put this over here where we can all see it a little bit better. Okay, let me go up to the to the view. Now, what makes this such a a powerful tool, and this is a what we call a relational database, where we relate tables to other tables or objects in one table to another table to get, to pull that out and to get a, a new result. What gets stored in the computer is this, the query, not the data. Unless you have the authority to go in and change the table, the data in the table stay the same until they're updated by somebody authorized to do it. But that's why this is such a powerful tool because you basically, it saves the query. This is why when you go and do Google and you start to look for something, it starts giving you lists of stuff under there which you can click on, okay, to do your search. Why? Because I don't know how many millions of people or tens of millions of people do a Google search every minute. Who knows? And I've seen the data and they're staggering. And all that Google does is it just catalogs and indexes all that and then it gives you the most likely choice. And or if you want to, you write your, you know, you, you do your own thing and find it. Okay? So that, that's why this is such a powerful tool because I can extract all kinds of data from here. Um, and in this, in this instance, I've got these three, uh, these three companies. And I can, I can alter this query pretty easily. Let's go back down to the design view. Click on that. And I'm gonna get, uh, let's see. I'm gonna get the product group. 
and the last order. And then I'm gonna look upstairs. And this will show me, and they have, the, I think these are grinders, saws and cutters or something like that. And this is the last time they ordered. Okay, now if I wanna put this last time they ordered into some kind of, of, of uh, order, I can do this, I can put this last order in descending order so I can see the last time somebody bought something from me, I'm, when did they buy something from me the last time? It was the 20th of 2009, okay? So the query is designed to help me just extract that type of data uh, and, and then I can generate a report with it if I care to. I'm gonna say this, I don't like the report function in Access. I try to avoid it at all costs because I just hate it. It's, it's nasty, it doesn't work very well, it's clumsy. I really think a lot of times, for example, this query, it'd be just as good as far as I'm concerned, okay, to throw it into Excel, okay, and then save that Excel table and dump it in a Word doc, okay, uh, do a screen, do a print screen, but trying to generate these reports, and we'll see this, it's just clumsy. And so I don't like the report function in Excel. But one function I really do like, and I'm not gonna say those changes, is what we call the form. Now, let's click on something here that will be good for us to work with. Let's click on friends, okay? And we have a list of people who are, who are our friends, and we have a contact number for them. Now let's go in and see if the contact number is a primary key and it's not, but it is an auto number, which means that each of these records are unique. Okay, now I'm gonna close this off. I'm not gonna make any changes to it. And I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna click Create on the Create tab, all right? And I'm gonna come over to the uh, form, form Wizard I'm going to choose, I want the table friends, okay? And I want everything from there. And then I'm going to click next. And I can, it, this will give me an idea, do I want it to look columnar, tabular, like a data sheet, or justified? I tend to like columnar because it kind of lets me uh, work with these. But let's just do the, oh, um, Let's go to the columnar and see what it looks like. I'm gonna click next, and then I'll click finish. Now, we've looked at some we've looked at some tables, and you can ask yourself: Would you rather input the data straight into the table, or would you rather use a form to input the data? Forms are also useful because I can search them. I can, I can do a search for a particular record. I can go from the first to the last. And, but more, most importantly, I can easily add new, I can easily add new records to a given table using a form. And so a form is, is that fourth one there. And we're just, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and let's just save this, right? And uh, right click save. Okay, and I'm gonna save it and then close it off. And if I look down here, you'll see a form called friends. Okay, so you can see all of these different tables. We've done a form, we've done, we, we've got a query, and we've kind of looked at the essential elements of a database and all of this is covered over there in chapter four, and they talk about over in page 138, the different wizards, the query wizard, the form wizard, the report wizard, macros, we're not gonna mess with those, or control wizards, okay? And they give us a nice bird's eye view, all right, of tables. Now, one of the things that makes this such a powerful tool is not only the ability to store data, 
okay? But also the ability to link tables to another. And I'm gonna click, I'm going to click database tools, and then I'm gonna click relationships. Let's see what we find over here. I don't have any in this one. All right, well, let's just do that. Click uh, relationship, and then let's click show table, okay? And I'm gonna add uh, one month and two months, okay? And three months, and then close it. So I'm gonna have this, okay? Now, I'm gonna go back up here for a moment and I'm gonna look at ID. I think that's a customer ID and we'll look at it for a moment. It's an ID number. Okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and close this off. And I'm gonna take ID, okay, here in the one month. And if you take your cursor and hold it, you'll see a little square and you'll get this pop up and we'll say, and we'll say uh, uh, the join type, okay? And if you look, it'll say only, only include the rows where the, where the uh, join fields from both tables are equal. So I only want to get them when, they, when they're equal and we'll click create. Then I'm gonna come here on this ID, come right across and I'll get the little square and I'll create it. This is what we call an inner join, okay? And that's, on that, but the relationship, and this is where uh, we get, this is what we call just a straight inner join, and this is, we only include the rows where the join fields from both tables are equal. Now these are three sets of three employees, I mean three, three months of work by these employees, and, and the employee's ID, assuming as we can assume hasn't changed. So we've joined the three tables, okay? So now I can get data from all three tables because I've joined. And that's why we call this a relational database, all right? Now typically when we join tables, the one on the left is called the parent, the other on the right is called the child, okay? And you can go back in and, and uh, look at the edit the relationship. This would be the parent, this would be the child, okay? If you want to, you can enforce referential integrity, and we'll click that to see if it's gonna do anything to us or let us, all right? And I'll click okay and see if that works. Uh, no, okay, if it's, not, you, you, if it's not indexed, it won't let us do that. So we'd have to go back and index and make sure they're all unique. But we're good to go. And we've, and we've linked these three tables, three tables together, excuse me, on the basis of, okay, the ID. So the book talks about that there over on page 147, and that's why we call it a relational database. We relate one table to another, okay, by joining them by at fields. Now there are gonna be times where we'll have one table where it has what we call a primary key, that's the key that makes it unique, and then we'll embed it in another table where it's called a foreign key, and we link the two tables together. Things that tend to get linked together are things like ID, or I could, I could make a multiple key, uh, uh, last name, first name, uh, date of birth, and make them all match, and then they will only match uh, they will only show up if they're matched. If they're matched in that way. Now, one of the nice things about this is I, I could, I can create. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a query. I'll go to query design, okay, and I'm going to add one month, two month. You see, they're joined at ID, and three month, they're joined at ID, okay. And I'm going to click. Uh, I'm going to click. Um, uh, see the ID. Okay. 
and let's see uh, what the, what the ID and I'm going to look at the hours worked. Let's see what we get. Maybe get gibberish. It's kind of thrown together. Okay. Well, this shows us the person uh, with ID 13. And there we are. We know that uh, they, in, in the first month, first quarter, first month of the quarter, they worked 280 hours a second. Okay. So now I pull those data from those three tables. I could get a total number of hours for this person. And I can do it by writing an expression in here, okay? Or I could do it by taking this query and, and throwing it into Excel. We'll, we'll be doing a little bit, we'll be doing some what we call expressions in these, okay? But don't, don't think for a moment that if I believe you've got some you know, hard lifting to do, that it's, that, that it's not kosher to throw stuff over into Excel. As you've heard me say before, let a database be a database and let an Excel sheet be an Excel sheet. And now, if I want to, I can write an expression, okay? And so I'm gonna come here and uh, I'll get rid of this. And, uh, uh, I'll put total quarter and put an ampersand, uh, pardon me, uh, a, a, a colon. And then in, uh, I'm going to put uh, uh, hours worked. And I have to, I have to put in the, uh, I have to put in the, um, I have to put in the hours work, the, uh, I'll put a bracket. You can see this starts to get old real fast, and I'm gonna have to put in a bracket. And I put HRS, okay, worked, okay, and uh, I'll close that bracket. I probably want me to put um, one underscore month, okay. And it will probably want me to go put that in parentheses. You could just see how how much this is going to be a, become a deal. When really the truth is, I could just go ahead and add the and go ahead and get the hours and just throw those over there and add them up. If I don't want to specify a particular ID, I'll just do this. And let's see what I get. That's going to show me, for, yeah, it's going to show me that ID. So I'm going to have to have the ID. Okay. So that's one of the problems. But the nice thing is I can join the tables, then go back and do the computational work if I want to do it. Okay. And no big deal there. But we join those three tables and did a little bit of work with them. Now, um, and when we do this a little, we'll do some of this on Wednesday, but we'll start to look at uh, case number one, okay? And that that case number one is, 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 with, this, is with this company called Northampton Abrasives, all right? And we'll be using uh, the database to do that. Now, I'll close this for just a minute. As you can see, I have plenty of these. You'll see the ACCBD1 done. I've got plenty of these, okay, that I've, that I've worked on. There's two, there's three. Each one of them, I've kind of tweaked them a little bit, just like I did the Excel cases, all right? And so, you're free to look at them and if you get and and one of those you would want to upload when the access case number one is due now let's go back over to the modules for a moment we'll see a little bit about what i'm talking about because i've worked through these many many times 
I try to say, okay, just if you want one, I try to give you several examples to work with. And this uh, here is here's here's one, okay. And I'm going to download this to my desktop, and I'm going to save it. And access database, okay. And I'm going to put it on my desktop, and I and I'll put this uh, Harmon Keith. Make sure it's on your desktop and I'll save it. All right, I'll enable the content. And what I like to do just to be sure is I close it off and then I go back down to my desktop and I find that, okay? And here we are. And we're ready to go. And this is case number one. And as we work through case number one, we'll see it's gonna have us run a query uh, and we work with, we work with the table and we may even do some lookup tables as we work through this. Yeah, because there's a lot of information there that we want to do this. We'll make some lookup, we'll create some lookup tables. Okay. But, for all intents and purposes, this is pretty much ready to go. And we'll do some work. Now, if you've got, and you ought to have your book with you, I'll just, one of the things about these cases, and, I, and over on, on the ch page 149, it starts with database case one, Northampton Embraces, and as usual, they tell us you know, what, some information about the company, okay, and why they need to use this tool and what they're trying to get, uh, what they're trying to get uh, accomplished, and some more verbiage, verbiage about uh, what they want. And in the middle of page 160, okay, they show us the important fields for the prototype system. And they talk about the company, the address, etc. And so when we do Northampton, okay, and we do that table, we'll have that. Now here's Northampton case one, and I'll show you what we have, all right? And now let's take a look for just a moment, and we'll go down to the design view. What we did here is we put in the, the uh, we put in an auto number, an ID, okay? And it says, yes, it's indexed, and does not accept duplicates. So every customer has a, their own unique ID, okay? Just like all of you have your own unique ID with Social Security, uh, or your own unique ID with OBU, or your own unique ID with whatever you log into, okay? Then the company, then the address, okay, then the city, and then the state, and then the zip code. And notice when we click on zip code, if you look down here on field properties, we use an input mask. Okay. And then on the last name, okay, we have the first name, we have their department. Then we have a product group. Okay. And we have the last time they ordered. Okay. And then we have an order pattern. Now, We'll want to come back and we'll do some work with this in terms of just the field properties, all right? And we and and we will probably um, we'll probably take a stab at uh, doing a little bit with this in terms of developing uh, some uh, uh, some lookup tables. Now, in fact, we might as well take a stab at one. I'm going to close this off, okay? And let's go out to the internet and let's see if we can find a um, list of states. And I'll pull this away for a second. List of two state abbreviation. Beautiful. All right. 
and uh, we want this. Uh, da, 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 the postal list of U.S. state abbreviations. Here we are. That's a little more. And there's a PDF file. I don't want this. Let's look at this state abbreviation list. Ah, beautiful. Now what we're going what I'm going to do is this is I'm going to take my cursor and I'm going to copy all of this everything in this table this list the state the name etc okay and I'm going to click control C all right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to diminish this down for just a second and I'm going to open up Excel. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to open up a fresh Excel sheet. And then it, and then at A, and then I'm going to click Control V. Ah. Hey, you weasel. Hey, Control C back down here there we are now here we are not too bad we have the abbreviation the name okay and we've got them all the way from Alaska and Montana now the one problem we have is they're stacked in here okay so I, I, I would rather, really rather have them be uh, down, and I would probably have to just do some, some work with this, okay, and to get one long table. There probably is some that. But what I would do then is throw this into a table and create what we call a lookup table. Well, yeah, M-O-N. Uh, let's just do this. This is one of the things we've got to convert some data or mess with them. We have the list right there. And I wonder if it's if I can copy. I'm going to I'm going to uh, back this out. Cuz I want it in one long list, not like it was there. Um, let's see here. List of two list of state abbreviations. Will that play nice? Probably that won't. That's just one of these problems we kind of have. Um, let's see if this will do it for us. Maybe so. All right. All I want to do is get it into one nice long table. So I'm in Control C. Please be nice. Nope. Uh, it's going to throw it out there horizontally. I don't want to do that. How do I want to do this? Well, you can see now, a part of this is, is just the challenge of getting these silly things into a format in a table that I can easily then import into, into, into uh, Excel, uh, pardon me, into Access. So I'm just kind of messing with this right here and maybe this will work for me. I'll click uh, copy and see if it'll give it to me um, in a vertical. There we go. Now, I'm going to have to do one other thing here on this sheet, and let's click up, click up on, click on the data, and da, 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 da. I want to do text to columns is I think what I want to play with. Oh, okay, I want to parse these. So I'll start with all the way down here, and we're going to split these off. Hopefully, and 
Let's see. Uh, you know, I'm split te text to columns. Okay. And I'm going to, uh, let's see, I de delimited. And I'm going to find anywhere there's a, um, other which would be now you'll notice what this just did if you look in the dialog box this just separated the state name from the uh, from the abbreviation and I did it using the uh, the uh, text to columns tool and I said okay I want to split it off like this so we'll click next and we'll click finish and hopefully we're in good shape. And there we are. Now we're ready to import this into Access. And I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna save it as, okay, I browse uh, on my desktop. I'm gonna call it state codes. Back to this is state C-O-D-E-S together. All right, now I'm going to click Save. And I've got this file down here called State Codes down on my desktop. Now, here's what I'm going to do next. Close that down. All right. And I'm going to come back to my database. All right. And I'm going to click External Data. And I'm going to get some data from Excel. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to get the data out of that file. There they are. Should be state codes, which I misspelled. First, uh, no, they're not. I don't have any row columns. Next. Next. And we'll go finish. Okay. And now you'll see this thing down here called state. You should see this table. Okay. Called, uh, it's called sheet one. Let's open that up. All right. And that's the field. So we're going to, have to do a little work on that. So let's close it. Okay. And then we'll rename it uh, state codes. State C O D E S. All right. I've done that. It's state codes. And then we're going to open it up again. And we have the ID. And we want to go into the field, into the design view, okay? And where it says field one, we want to call that state. And then the in the second field, we want to put a brief, which means for abbreviation. I'm going to go back up here and say, yeah, we'll save these. And we're good. Now we have a table over here called uh, a, a table over here called state codes. You said we've done a little bit of work, but I want to show you something here. I'm going to open up uh, where we we were working with was it friends? Yeah. What 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 database were we working with? Uh, access case one. Okay. And I'm going to open up customers. Oh no, I think it's the friends. That was the one I wanted to work with. No, where did I have the one that didn't have their, their uh, didn't have their, uh, anyway, business dress. Got the B site. All right. We'll just do it on this. Uh, Maybe it's going to be customers. Well, what I intended to do 
was to take the uh, to take that to take the table, okay, and and basically create a lookup table. And I'll do this real for a quick. Open up friends, okay, and it's got the uh, the state, all right. And I'm going to go to design view on this, all right. And I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to put state abbreviate, okay. And that'll be uh, a short text. And now. I've got this state of brief, it's called short text, and I'm gonna make the field size will be two, okay? Now, I'm gonna come here and you'll see a second tab called lookup, and I click that. I'm gonna come over here and, and click down and I'm gonna get a thing called a combo box, okay? And then I'm gonna get the table query Okay, and I'm gonna come down here and get state codes. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna click on abbreviation and then state. And run that and it'll show me the abbreviation and the state. And I'm good. Now, We'll do this a little bit later, but I wanted to show you this. And what we're gonna do here now is I, I have the state abbreviation and it's a one bound column. I'm gonna put column count is two, okay? And there's no column header, but I'm coming down to the thing where it says column widths and I'm, and I'm gonna put two inches, semicolon, two inches, all right? And I'm going to click view. I'll save the table. Now, when I come over here on the state abbreviation, watch what watch what happens. I click this and I create a drop down menu. So if I don't know the st the state abbreviation, okay, I can find it. Now this has to be over a little bit more, okay, and. Here you can start to see the two. This first one should really be it should be a one one inch each. But if I know it's Alabama, boom. So it's going to put that in there. Okay. By adding or, or getting less data. Well, all right. Let's go back in there for a second. But the whole idea is to produce it was to produce that drop down menu, and. I think well, I'm just I've got too much space in there. I know what it is. I told it we could only be two, and I should have left it at 255. So that's why it's not going to let me do that. Okay. And would let me save the record. So I'll go back in there for a second into the design view, and on that state abbreviation, I'll make it 255, and that should do it for us. And then the lookup will be uh, one inch semi, uh, semicolon and then one inch, okay? And we'll try that. And then this time we'll try the state abbreviation. And there we are in Illinois, Alabama, see? So we'll do, so that's just one of those ways we get some data integrity. And this is kind of give us a good start and kind of mess around with the thing, how it's organized, and we'll see some of the other tools that we'll be using. Thank you very much, folks. We started early, so we've done our 75 minutes. I appreciate your time, and I'm going to stop the share, okay? And I'm going to stop the recording.